Joining me on the line now is Chris Watney. Chris is a filmmaker, director and former player for Corinthian Casuals. First things first, Chris, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. Now, of course, we're talking to you today because the film Brothers in Football, um, this amazing film surrounding Corinthian Casuals, which, of course, are based uh, very near us in Tolworth. It, it sounds like an amazing story. Just So it was on BT Sport last night, wasn't it, Chris? That's right. It was on last night at nine o'clock, and um, it's gone really well. We couldn't be happier. And I saw on social media there was such a reaction to it with people watching it and really kind of outpouring of support. Yeah, I, I think... The, the beauty of the film is that it's telling football history that no one really knows. It's been forgotten. And even people within the club were discovering more parts of the story as I got further into into the making of it. Um, so I think it's just this realisation that there's this national treasure on people's doorstep in the Kingston Borough. And it goes back to the Second World War, doesn't it, when there was a side that, that were called back to kind of uh, fight in the war as opposed to playing it. Could you kind of outline where the story comes from and what the connection between the two, of course, Corinthian casuals in the UK and Corinthians, very famous club in Brazil, where does the connection come from? Yeah, well, it, it goes back even further to the First World War. Um, so in 1910, the original Corinthians were the, the first ever real global icons of, of football, and they are the club credited with popularizing football all around the world. And in 1910, they went on a tour to Brazil where they inspired five railway workers to start a club in Sao Paulo. So they were so amazed by how incredible these Corinthians were. And they started the team, and they decided to call it Corinthians Paulista, after the great Englishman who inspired them. Four years later, in 1914, the team were going down to play more games in South America when the First World War broke out. And they all decided immediately to come home. And they didn't kick a ball in Brazil. They came home, they joined the army, and the club lost, tragically, a record number of men in the First World War. And so we thought, wouldn't it be an amazing story if we could possibly try and convince Corinthians Paulista, who at the time were the world champions, to play us in a game and take the Corinthian casuals back down to South America and back to Brazil to fulfill the matches that never happened 100 years before. And that's what the film is about, and we, we managed it. Amazing. And wh when was the game itself? The game itself was actually in 2015. It was in January 2015. So it's been, it's been a long process. It's taken five years to make the film. And uh, that's really because when I, when I began the process, um, no one really in London believed that we were going to be able to pull off this, this event and pull off the match. And so I'd go and see companies who back films and I'd say, this is the plan. We're going to take the Corinthian casuals to Brazil to play the world champion. And they all looked at me like I was mad. <laughs> and so we've had to do it by you know, finding little bits of money here and there all along the way. And it's taken five years as a result of it. But it's now come out for the 100 years of, of Armistice and Remembrance Day this, this week, and uh, it couldn't be more fitting, as it turns out. So we're really proud. And, of course, Corinthian casuals play at St George's Park here in Tolworth. Now, going over to Brazil and playing at Corinthian Stadium, it's a massive stadium, isn't it? Tell me what the atmosphere... It's probably impossible to describe, but what was that game like? Well, to, to anyone who hasn't seen the film, uh, and to anyone who wants to try and picture what it was like when we got off the plane in Sao Paulo, I can only say, look at the old footage of the Beatles arriving when they came back from Liverpool, and you see those scenes. You see the scenes in, uh, in London at the airport where the crowd are just mobbing the Beatles. That is genuinely what happened to our team of, of amateur footballers from, from Tolworth when they turned up in Sao Paulo. It was... Um, it was quite extraordinary. The, the Corinthians in Sao Paulo have 30 million fans. They're the biggest club in South America. And that fan base were the people who, who really got the Corinthian casuals to come back to South America. And it's just, uh, yeah, as you say, words don't really, really do it justice. you just got to see it. Tell me a little bit about Charles Miller. Well, Charles Miller, he was a schoolboy in Hampshire. And in the 1890s, the Corinthian side went to Hampshire to play against the Select 11 of the county. And when they got there, there was only 10 players. They only had 10 men. And so a local school teacher said to them, 
why don't you use this guy, Charles Miller? He's a good player. And so this young lad played for the Corinthians, and it was the real golden generation of the Corinthians. They were the world's greatest team at the time, so it must have been intimidating for him. But he got standout praise in the papers after the game, and he was said to be a really outstanding left winger. So soon after the, uh, the match, the Corinthians discovered that he was actually going to go back to Brazil. He was half Brazilian, half Scottish. And so they gave him two footballs to take on his travels back to Brazil. And it was with those footballs, it said that Charles Miller introduced football to Brazil. It, going on to 1910, the Corinthians were going to Rio for a tour. And then Charles Miller said, why don't you come to Sao Paulo to play against my teams in the Sao Paulo Championship, which he'd started. And he was also the man who suggested to the five railway workers, why don't you call your team Corinthians? So he's got, he's got an amazing, um, uh, what's the word, but he, he, he had an incredible influence on the story and an influence on the Corinthians uh, start. It was, um, yeah, just one of those strange little happy accidents, really, that the school teacher ever suggested he should play for them. Now, Chris, tell me where your involvement with Corinthian Casual starts from, because you, of course, striker there. How, how long were you at the club, and, and when did you first join, and, and what was your kind of story? Yeah, well, I'm like a lot of guys who play for Corinthian Casuals, where you come up through quite good football clubs, and you have dreams of hopefully making it one day, and you're a young lad, and I ended up uh, playing at Sutton United um, in the conference in about 1998, 99. I did my hamstring pretty early on in the season, in my first season there, and someone said to me, well, look, we haven't got a youth team, I mean, not a youth team, we haven't got a reserve team, um, why don't you go off and get football somewhere else? And so that somewhere else happened to be Corinthian Casuals, because it's an amateur club, they're the only amateurs in their league, and they said, why don't you go and play there, and it's a good shop window, because there's no contracts, you never know, you could move on, and I turned up at Corinthian Casuals in 1999, and... I knew the name, but I didn't know the full story. I don't think any player who, who first joins Corinthian Casuals knows the full story. You're just given a pink and brown shirt, and you think, mm, that's a bit odd. <laughs> and you see the stands, and it's not quite as big as other places you've perhaps played before. And then slowly, you realize that this amateur football club has an incredible atmosphere because everyone is there simply for the love of the game. No one's getting paid. The people on the pitch, the people off the pitch, everyone's doing it for the love of the football club. Um, it's a really special community, and I just, I just fell in love with the place. And so, I joined it in 1999, and I've never left. I've been there. Mm. I've been there ever since. And Chris, on that special community you spoke about, tell me about the. Is it the schools under 11 at Corinthian Casuals? Yeah, it's the schools 11. So basically. There's, there's, that's the team that I now manage. That's like graduation from, from playing in the first team. You move on to the school's team. And it's for the former players of the side. And what they do is they really are the ambassadors of the Corinthian spirit. And they travel around to all the top independent schools in the area. And they play every Saturday against 18-year-olds. So you've got 40-year-olds playing against the 18-year-olds, which can sometimes be a challenge. But the idea is, is that their job is to spread the Corinthian spirit and teach the game's next generation how to play the game with sportsmanship over gamesmanship. And in this day and age, I think you know it's a real antithesis to everything you see in the professional game, and, and it's got a lot to lot to stand for, I think, in uh, in today's world. Chris, I can't wait to see the film. I'm so excited. I've got it recorded on my on my uh, Sky. Where can people who didn't have a chance to catch it on BT watch it? Is there a chance in the future that they can see it? Yeah, I think there is. I, I, there's there's two ways this might happen, <laughs> but I think hopefully we will be able to to get it out to a lot more people. It was on BT Sport this weekend, and it will be repeated uh, several several other times through the next weeks or so. But but hopefully there'll be a chance where we'll be able to sell some DVDs down at the club. Um, and also, you never know, maybe a terrestrial channel will take it as well. And you might even see it on something like a BBC uh, or a Netflix or, or something like that in the future. Um, but I have to say, the film took five years and it was an absolute battle. Mm. And BT Sport came in and supported us like no one else. And even to the point where BT Sport wanted to be the official club sponsor this year. So... The team are currently running around down at Tolworth 
wearing BT Sport on their chest so proudly. So couldn't, couldn't thank them more, but we do want more people to watch it, obviously. Oh, fantastic. Well, Chris Watney, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you so much.